You have time traveled. Hey guys, Julius XX here. It's day three in London. Today's a really light agenda. I don't have too much on the go. It's going to be a really chill day. But I do plan on doing a few things, like I'm going to go to check out some of the shopping, so I'm going to go to Covent Garden. Perhaps Spitalfields Market, I'm not too sure. But close to Spitalfields Market is a bubble tea shop, which I really want to check out because bubble tea in Toronto is, is huge. It's not that big of a scene down here in London, so I want to see what they actually do have. I'm going to go to the London Amphitheater, which is, as far as I remember, an actual piece of Roman, Roman-like architecture uh, underground and in addition to that later on in the day uh, in the evening actually I'm going to the Jack the Ripper tour that's gonna take me about two hours I think as far as I know they're just gonna walk us through the areas in which he was a menace but so catch you in a bit obnoxious here but I feel like Covent Garden is the mall of the future. <laughs> yeah, um, it's outdoors but sort of not outdoors. It's hard to explain but as you can take a look around me it's very bustling. Honestly a sensory overload right now. This place is gorgeous. All right. senses are still overloaded. When I first got in here I was in sensory overload mode. I'm still in sensory overload mode because to my right there's a street performer with a very bustling uh, crowd. To my left there's a Burberry and a Tom Ford store. Lots of good eats, lots of good people. Covent Gardens is legit, very, really, really, really live. Sort of passing by all the stores, Tom Ford, Burberry, Ray-Ban, I didn't really want to go into any of them, but then I see an All Saints and like, I'm down, so I'm inside All Saints. Uh, I'm gonna work out to see if anything here that's on sale is actually a good discount, considering the Canadian conversion. Two hours later. So behind me is St. Paul's Cathedral, home of the sweet baby Jesus. I don't even know where I walked from, but I finally found the Roman Amphitheater. It looks to be open. Most stuff on Sunday seems to be closed. Every restaurant or, or um, shop I passed around Oxford Street and like even in this Gresham Street or like this kind of like office area, everything seems to be closed. But luckily the Roman Amphitheater is open, so let's go inside and check it out. Theater, I wrapped it up is fairly fairly small and quick uh, the main thing that I want to see was the underground um, remnants of the London Coliseum where they used to have gladiator battles and, and fights to the death similar to UFC maybe not to the death in UFC but the same kind of crazy fanatics were prevalent during that time a lot of them were even glorified in like kind of made it to celebrities and retired rich and free and that's very interesting that not much has changed since then when it comes to combat sports maybe except for the death part and the tigers and using of weapons now I still have about 
three or four more hours left to go, three, about three hours left to go before I go into the Jack the Ripper tour. I'm really thirsty, I'm really hungry, so I'm probably gonna walk to the bubble tea place in a, in a little bit. Okay, so I finally made it, walking through all these abstract and crazy crevices and roads, but I finally found London's, well, I mean, one of the London bubble tea spots called, I don't know what it's called, I think it's called Quaker Street, but I finally found it, I came all the way from Toronto to try bubble tea in London, so let's see how we get on with that. Okay, so I got OG with it and I ended up getting a bubble tea, chocolate milk tea, my go-to bubble tea. In typical, obviously, British fashion, I was greeted with a URI before ordering, so I found that to be kind of curious. I asked for a large, but they only have one size. And just to be clear, the place is called Quaker Street. Um, so let me see how the, the Brits do bubble tea. The tapioca is not really flavorful. Um, it's kind of chewy. And the milk tea itself is okay, but it kind of tastes like something if you had bought bubble tea and then you left it in the fridge overnight or like maybe for a few hours and then you got back to it and drank it. That's kind of what it tastes like. So, I'm sure the threshold is very low in London, England, but in Toronto, this kind of flavor wouldn't fly, but I'm sure it's fine. It's, it's fine here, for sure. Okay, so I've been walking around Shoreditch, um, and I found this place called Serial Killer Cafe, and it's a restaurant based off of solely around cereal, and like that, just get the hell out of here, that's freaking fascinating. I'm actually seated right now, but I'm sitting on a bed. And, uh, I don't know, <laughs> it's really cool. And in the front, there's a bunch of different cereals you can choose from. Um, here's the menu. I'm gonna go through and I don't know what seal of a get. Later. You have time traveled! Ooh. Nice, that's show business. Now, but you want evidence. You're thinking, but Jeremy, anyone can say they've time traveled. Look below you, cobbled feet. Yeah, look at that, not bad, not bad. But the trick in London is to look up. 1886. Dead witness statements and so on were collected to try and find out anything about the killer. And what I'm gonna tell you now, we know from before the murder. So. So Blind Man's Buff in the 1880s was a game. It's a game people played because there was no television. Uh, what did they do with this game? Well, someone was blindfolded, and then the other five or six people, it would be done in the street or in a room, had to kind of run around taunting them, and they had to try and catch them. So we don't play this today because of television, possibly as well because a lot of groping. No, I, I, I do not recommend this game. Uh, nonetheless, uh, we have a picture here of the police, and the police were called Blind Man's Buff players because this meme is saying they are blind. It's as if they're playing that game, and the murderer's running all around them, and they're blind, and they can't catch the murderer. The police are blind.